One of the great things about this modern day is how readily available electrical power is. For instance, I can plug something into the wall and instantly have access to thousands of watts of energy that's being generated by a power station that's many miles away. Now, how is this possible? Danner, tech, danner, tech, danner, danner, tech, danner, tech, danner. Hello, this is Danner Tech. And today I'm going to be discussing why the power grid uses alternating current. And I'm going to be doing a few really cool demonstrations to help give you a more intuitive understanding of why this is. Let's get started. Now let's say I want to power these light bulbs. I have my power source over here as a variac putting out approximately 7.39 volts. And the wires that are going to these lights are just very short wires, around maybe one foot long. You can see that these lights are glowing brightly. And according to my cool new clamp meter from Kai Wheats, it is drawing approximately 0.8 amps. Now this works good and all because the wires that we have going from the load to the power source are fairly short. So there's not much loss of electricity in the wires. But what happens if we have lots of wire going between the power source and the load? Then we're going to get some losses. We'll simulate that long wire with a simple resistor of approximately 2.2 ohms. It's kind of interesting to look at a chart like this that shows the resistance of different gauges of wire per 1,000 feet. For most power lines that we see, resistance per uh, one mile, I think, is 0.2 ohms. Hooking up this light to the power supply through the resistor, we can see that the light does indeed still glow, albeit not as bright as it originally did. So let's use the clamp meter to measure some characteristics of this circuit and see how it's functioning right now. No clamp meters are really cool. It's actually able to measure the current that flows to the wire because as the current flows to the wire, it generates a magnetic field, which the clamp meter is able to measure. We see that there is approximately 0.69 amps flowing through this wire. Let's measure the voltage across this resistor and see how big that voltage drop is. Because if there's 0.69 amps flowing through this one section of wire, there's 0.69 amps flowing through the entirety of the circuit. With my meter connected across the resistor, you can see that we have a voltage drop of 1.55 volts across that resistor, which means the voltage getting to the actual load is 1.55 volts less, which is why it's drawing slightly less current. Now what's interesting is if we calculate the power that's being dissipated by that resistor right now, we can calculate that by multiplying 1.556 by 0.69, which is the current flowing through it, and our result is approximately 1.07 watts being dissipated by that resistor. That means through this fictional power line, we're losing one watt of power through this resistor, which doesn't seem like too much, but considering the circuit is only drawing a minimal load, that's quite a lot. And if we raise the power being drawn by this circuit, if it draws more current, we're gonna lose more power through this resistor. Wow, that resistor is getting pretty warm. You can see that when a power line has resistance and you have a lot of current flowing through it, we can see that we do have a lot of loss through our line, which is where something comes in called a transformer. And no, not the big walking robots that turn into cars, but a piece of metal with two coils in it. This is a piece of iron that kind of forms in like a figure eight shape two coils around that center bit. Uh, these two coils, because this is a 12 volt to 120 volt transformer, or I guess you could say that the opposite way around, we're going to have a ratio of coils in this transformer of one to 10, because 10 times 12 is approximately 120 volts. So what happens in this transformer is typically you put 110 volts in one end and you get 12 volts out the other end. But in our case, we're gonna be flipping it around and hooking it up to our seven volt power supply. So the voltage is actually going to be boosted when it goes into the transformer to maybe about 70 volts on the output. We can check that. On the output of the transformer, you can see that we have around 63 volts on the output. So it stepped it up a little bit less than a one to 10 ratio, but still that is a pretty high voltage on the output. Now, what happens if we connect another 12 volt transformer 
Well, it's going to step down that 63 volts once again to that around 7.3 volts that we're feeding into the first transformer. Turning it on once again, we can see that we have about 7.43 volts on the output of the second transformer. So we are successfully stepping the voltage up from 7 volts to around 60 volts, and then successfully stepping it down from 60 volts back down to 7 volts. Now is when we're really going to see something interesting happen. So turning on the circuit, we can see that the light bulb starts glowing, everything's working. And if I put my clamp meter on the secondary part of the circuit, where we have the load, we see that we're getting that same 0.835 amps. But now, if I put my clamp meter on the high voltage side, we're seeing that we're only getting 0.101 amps out of that. So there's significantly less current flowing through this part of the circuit, but there's more current flowing through that part of the circuit. So why is that? That's kind of weird. Well, the reason why is that we're stepping up the voltage, but there's still the same amount of power being carried in this part of the circuit. So even though the voltage is higher, it's the same amount of power, which means the current is going to be less. Which means that by stepping up the voltage, we can have more voltage and less current, but the same amount of power being delivered to that final load. Now that we know there's less current flowing through this middle part of the circuit, we can put our fictional power line there, the 2.2 ohm resistor. Let's measure this circuit with the virtual power line resistor in place. We see that on the load output, we have 0.824 amps, same as always. And on the middle part of the circuit, the high voltage line, we have 0.99 amps, about 0.1 amps flowing through there. Now let's check the voltage lost across that resistor. The voltage drop now across the resistor is only 0.237 volts. So 0.237 volts at 0.1 amps is only 0.023 watts. So if you remember before, we were losing 1.07 watts through that power line resistor, and now we're only losing 0.023 watts through that resistor. So as you can see, that means we're losing 46 times less power through that resistor, which is awesome. So this principle is what allows our power grids to function so efficiently. Now we have a power plant that's many miles away that's generating an alternating current of a certain voltage. That alternating current is then fed into a giant transformer that steps it up not just nine times like we did here, but many hundreds of times, even to like a million volts perhaps. That high voltage, very low current electricity is then sent over lines that span hundreds of miles to our cities where we receive that power. And those power lines, to save money, they don't use expensive materials like copper that are low resistance. They use things like aluminum, which are a little bit cheaper and higher resistance. But because we have that very high voltage, low current, we're going to get very low losses through that power line. And that electricity, it's going to go to these big substations. You've probably seen them around your town. It looks like this big electrical place. That steps down that very high voltage electricity to a lower voltage that goes to the power lines on our streets. And if you look on some of those power lines, you see this big uh, white looking cylinder that has wires coming in and out of it. And that again is a transformer that steps down that power again to the voltage that's safe to use in our house. So by stepping up and down AC voltages, we can more efficiently transmit them over longer distances. So this brings us to why we use alternating current in our power grids. So first of all, direct current is electricity that flows in one direction. And alternating current is electricity that alternates. It changes from positive to negative at a certain rate or frequency. In the US, that frequency is 60 hertz, which means it switches back and forth 50 times per second. Now, when it comes to these transformers that step up the voltages, we need to feed these transformers alternating current. Because if we feed these transformers direct current, it's going to create a fixed magnetic field. And once that magnetic field is there, and there's no change in it, nothing's going to happen. 
It's just going to be a transformer that's magnetized. No electricity is going to be transferred to the other coil. But now, if we have alternating current, and that magnetic field is fluctuating, that fluctuating magnetic field is going to induce a current into the second coil, which then is going to result in a voltage that is greater than the input, or less. So as you can see, if we didn't use alternating current in our power grids, we couldn't use transformers, and we couldn't step up voltages from the power plant to cross these transmission lines over a long distance before making it to the places where we consume electricity. That is why alternating current is so useful in our power grid. So the clamp meter I used for this video, the Kaiweitz HT200B, is a very good clamp meter. They were nice enough to send me this one to use for the video, and I recommend that y'all buy one. It works very well, and it's pretty cheap on Amazon as well. The link will be in the description. One cool feature that I saw on this was if you are measuring a voltage that's uh, dangerously high or measuring a current that's dangerously high, it'll actually turn the screen orange. That's pretty cool. So, as always, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for next time. See ya! Hey! <laughs>